Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome everyone to the Prog Talks with Uncle Prog, Rune, here today again. And today I have another Norwegian musician with me, Trun Jellum. How are you, Trun? Well, I'm uh, having a quite good time. Uh, it's uh, sort of spring here in Oslo. And uh, I also have released an, a single today with one of my many musical projects. So it's a, well, uh, it's, it's a good it's a good day. Yes, mm. we will we will get back to that single uh, <laughs> at one point here, but you know the 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 main reason really which why I brought you on is because I wanted to talk about the album you released with Suburban Savages. Demagogue yeah. Days, it's been out for a little over a month, right? Uh, yes, it was released at the 5th of March on yeah. Apollon Records. Mm. Exactly. Once again, the, the, the great Apollon Records with uh, all like a lot of Norwegian great prog and and you are yeah. you you guys are are also one of the bands that that are are signed there. So how has the reception been? How are you? How how do you feel about uh, the feedback you've had? Uh, it's been well. It's been so great. It's um, when we delivered the, the master for 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 pressing of LPs and CDs, we we had this feeling that well, it's. It's something special about this album, and uh, fortunately, people have, well, most uh, most reviewers and people have say the same that it's a it's an album that's uh, probably our best album. Uh, it's a very varied album. It has a uh, from all of these funny, small, shorter songs to this grander epics with with a lot of sections and so on. And and the response have been some of the reviews are you know like you know says states that this is the the best album of 2021 and so on. So, so, and we have sold a lot of records uh, yeah. on Bandcamp. I think we're out of CDs soon. And uh, so it's, um, yeah, it's been quite, um, we're very satisfied. <laughs> that's, that's nice. And it must be inspiring to see people enjoying the music so much and selling out and everything. Yeah. And, and especially when, when you, when you read, reviews and, and listen to 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 uh, podcasts and so on and people are uh, saying kind of things that well that i was thinking when i wrote the music you know i i, I was trying to you know put forward you know uh, trying to to make uh, trying to try to paint a kind of picture uh, and and suddenly realize that people you know see the same picture as me that that's yeah, quite they, cool <laughs> they, they picked up they pick actually picked up on what you wanted to you know show yeah. with your music or tell with your music yeah yeah which, yeah, which, yeah. Uh, Much be and, and, a lot, and a lot of reviews are like that you know so yeah. and that's quite cool mm. <laughs> Well, the band has been around for a while, you know, I, I, and, and I wanted to ask you about because not everybody might be uh, familiar with Suburban Savages. And the first album was released all the way back in 2008, 2007, wasn't it? Yeah, and, late 2007, yes. Yeah, and, the, and then the band was called Trund and the Suburban <laughs> Savages, right? Yeah, it's it's actually was actually called it, it, when you see it's it's a TR and then there's a little dot there yeah, and it's yeah. because it's yeah it's kind of a tribute to the old uh, Roland TR drum machines, you know, TR eight oh eight nine oh nine and so on. And and and, and a friend of mine well, way back in time, called me, you know, TR on, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it's stuck. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. almost unpronounceable, you know. Nobody, nobody can see the joke, you know. Thanks. Nobody get it. But uh, yeah, it started. Uh, but it started out well, two thousand three, four ish. I started writing songs, and then okay. I, then Thomas. Thomas Meidel got involved, and, and then it suddenly evolved and became a, a, a band. Yeah. After, after, yeah. 
Because on this new album, you have Thomas Maidel, which you mentioned. You also have mm. Anders Krabberud. And mm. then new, uh, the new person on this album is uh, Mari mm. Lesteberg, right? On keyboards and vocals. And mm. but, but the band has had other musicians involved through that through this period right you had another guitarist on the previous album yeah. Kureva which was released in 2017 yeah because that that mm. album is um the first one you did for Apollon is it isn't it yes yeah correct uh, we, we had um, in in 2007 it, it just started as a kind of solo project for me Thomas yeah. got involved and he played some he played guitars and keys, and then a friend of mine called Hans Petter was Hans Petter was also involved on keyboards, and and then I needed a bass player, and uh, one of well the best bass player I know is Anders from Hans Papa, so I asked him, and he was very interested, uh, and we recorded that yellow album, the TR on and the Suburban Savages. Yeah. And um, it grew into a, a, a permanent band. We played a lot of concerts in 2007, 2008. We, we played a lot of concerts. And then it kind of, uh, well, then Ponce Papa uh, became, became the main, kind of yeah. the main band the project, you know, people get to work and kids and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And, and then we realized that we... It, it was too much fun playing this music and too much fun writing it and so on. So we needed to have the band put together again. And then we included Nin, uh, Nina Kavur on guitar. Yes. And she also has a wonderful Moog guitar, which has this infinite, it's infinite sustain thing, you know, frick on steroids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that unique sound that is on that album. I've always wondered about that, but that's very, a very unique sound. Yeah. Very unique, uh, and you can get, uh, and you can even have infinite sustain with a clean sound, you know, which is in, more or less impossible. Exactly, on, on yeah. Regular, yeah, uh, and and it's not, it's not like an ebo for with an ebo you only play one string at a time. Yeah, but yeah. With this one, you get the chords and so on. So, so yeah, Nina was uh, very much integrated into Dan, and then she got uh, the opportunity to have. Um, to take uh, um, to become a doctor uh, in 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 um, uh, what's it called uh, with language uh, studies uh, linguistics oh, I see. Uh, in Ling California. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she she, she had to move away. Bit... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So she had to move away. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and it, it's not that easy to rehearse when she lives in in California and San Diego, and <laughs> we we are located in Oslo, Norway. Of course not. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, before she left, uh, we got a new keyboard player because my good friend Hans Petter uh, didn't have time to, to spend on music. So, um, and I got a tip from uh, Ola, um, uh, in, uh, who plays bass guitar in, in uh, uh, Glutton and, and uh, Mitopeak Mine about oh. Mari. And uh, I checked out her band called Fractal Frac Fraction Destruction. And she she's really great she's she is kind of brought up she's a, a quite a few years younger than the rest of us but mm -hmm. she's brought up with the same progressive rock i maybe think she her first keyboard was an organ that could play hammond sounds because her big her big she was she was a big fan of keith emerson <laughs> oh i see i see yeah yeah and she has a beautiful voice. She is uh, very good timing, very good timing, very steady in, in regarding tempos and rhythms. So uh, and uh, so when uh, Nina left, it was kind of well we we had uh, this quartet with guitar, bass, drums, and keyboards. So we we decided to stay. Be, be, just stay as the uh, as the court that we was so so uh, well um, it kind of sums up the history <laughs> yeah i see yeah well uh, uh, that that sort of answers another question i wanted to ask not fully but it but it sort of answers it because these uh, uh, musicians you know coming and going out of the band and and i have to say yeah. that that uh, the first album and even Kureva is maybe less accessible than this new album. Uh, this new one seems to be, you know, very positive, upbeat. It has a lot of catchy melodies. 
And, mm-hmm. and the previous albums, even if I do enjoy them very much, they are a bit more convoluted, a bit more, you know, you have to listen a bit yeah. more to them to, to get into. Yeah. It's like some of these new tracks are almost like, you know, pop music catchy, that there's <laughs> details in them that sort of strike you at the first <laughs> listening. So I was yeah. wondering, how would you, what about the ev- the musical evolution of the band since that first album in 2007? up until, of course, that long break until you yeah. recorded Kuriva and then now this new album. How would you describe that? Does it have to do with the musicians coming and going? Of course, you write a lot of the music. What has changed? Well, you, you, you touched upon quite a few elements there. Uh, I have changed. Uh, all the musicians have become a much bigger part of the band and with yeah. their influences and their their suggestions their 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 what what they are also uh, um, bring to the table in the band and yeah. generally when i started suburban savages uh, i have played in pons papa for quite a few years and and pons papa have kind of grown into this kind of well in pons papa we do we have a lot of freedom we, we can do a lot of a lot of stuff in pons yeah. papa but it's yeah. most complicated instrumental music exactly know? yeah uh, uh yeah and I, i've always been a huge fan of you know, vocal singing using the the voice um also i'm also a huge fan of you know uh, you know sim- simpler you know music like uh, I, I, as much as i love yes and uh, genesis you know gentle giant and so on i'm also a huge fan of you know like uh, Kraftwerk, uh, of uh, Talking Heads, uh, B-52s, all yeah. that kind of music. I love that, that, that those beautiful melodies that just hangs onto your ear right away. And um, so I wanted to create music that was a little bit more, that was very diverse from yeah. Papa. When Excellent. I was decided to make my first solo album, I didn't want to make an album that sounded like... Uh, a drummer led Panza Papa, you know. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and Thomas was involved at the first album, uh, and he is an extremely creative uh, musician, uh, and he always had, you know, he just have always have an idea. He always have something to say, always something to twist and turn the simplest idea into something special, mm. and uh, even if I wrote. Mostly, most of the parts on the first album, Thomas was involved there. And then when I came to writing music for Koreva, I have I have started to become well a better composer. Mm. You know, uh, I, I could I, I could even play some you know play some chords on the keyboards and so on. <laughs> uh, and I started to uh, I I read some books about composing. I don't read music, but I can. Uh, or write it, but I can uh, I can use the computer and so on. Yeah. So I learned some musical theory. Try to listen. Try to uh, learn the, the the building blocks of making music, and um, uh, and I also wanted to explore other sounds on Cordova. So therefore, the last track is this kind of pastiche of of crowd, German crowd rock. Yes. used with improvisation and huge symphonic explosion at the end, you know, like it's King Crimsonish. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and in my opinion, that that album is kind of like all over the place <laughs> <laughs> and very dense, very 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 dense harmonics and so on. Yeah. Very simple tunes, mainly very A B A B C A B structure. And when I started to write music. For uh, for demagogue days, I, I had the ideas, but I wanted to get uh, the involvement from the other musicians because they are, you know, uh, you have Thomas with all his uh, all his creativity, but also Amnush is a really really skilled uh, composer. Yeah, some of the most intriguing, very <laughs> the most uh, well. The most avant-garde compositions uh, on on some of the Panzer albums is written by Anders. Yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot of times, it's just he's very much into this, you know, writing uh, riffs and and so on that just go go and go and go with with yeah. stuff on the top. And some of them are so complicated rhythmically. <laughs> there are oh, I can't remember which song it was. But I, I I think we were rehearsing 
two years to get it right, you know. <laughs> so when we played it in yeah. France in 2013, and and when everybody came in at the same one, it was like, yes, you can <laughs> finally, <laughs> it's working. <laughs> the it's working. The, like, the, mach the machine, machine is finally running, right? So <laughs> yeah, the machine is finally running. Yeah. And, uh, and but to cut it short, it's we. Uh, I realized that having all these good musicians and, and Mario, of course, in the band, I, I realized I have to use their strength to, yeah. to, to make. And, and I also wanted to make an album that was as much as I love dense, complex, dark, you know, music. I also yeah. love, you know, the sunny side of life, you know, mm. uh, and, and the sunny side of music, you know, and, and, and I wanted to make a, an album that was a little bit more symphonic, you know? Mm. Uh, and, and, and the cool thing is that I think it was um, Jakob Holm Lupo that said that it sounded like my Genesis and Saga roots were <laughs> exposed oh, yeah. on this album. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with Jakob there. Uh, Jakob Holm Lupo, of course, from White Willow and Telepath and mm. is a very well-known yeah. producer. And so yeah. I agree with his take, you know, that that album shows the, the saga and the sticks and, the, you know, I also yeah. get some, I also get some like, you know, some of those tracks feels like being out in the sun for me. Yeah, and, nice. And, yeah, <laughs> and I another album which which sort sort of gives me those feelings are some of the you know later Camel albums which are like focused mm. on more more you yeah, know jazz yeah. and fusion and you know it's very upbeat and a positive energy yeah. and yeah. I have to say that for being a Norwegian band I I feel it's quite unique because you touched on it you know the the darkness mm. the bleakness a bit of you know this like earthy feel that mm. that a lot of scandinavian and norwegian mm. prog has but mm. this album is sort of different it's more uplifting why why do you think uh, yeah. suburban savages went in that direction <laughs> where you were never like um you were never tempted to make like a a woody woodsy mountain <laughs> <laughs> marshland uh, bleak norwegian no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> prog album <laughs> I, I I love that kind of music. Me too, uh, I even yeah. play in a band called Ingelre with with uh, Chet Langos and Gaut the Swiss. Yes, uh, another thing. A, another thing we'll be touching on actually. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. An, an epic dark Norwegian uh, wood prog of the woods. You know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but generally, I think it has something to do with uh, uh, when we started recording this album. It was in 2019. It was, you know, it, it was just another carefree year, you know? It, yeah. it, it was just a year. And then when, and then, well, and then the pandemic Happened, arrived at yeah. the scene. Yeah. And, um, and for me, sitting, uh, I was, I was, I mixed the album uh, uh, the spring, summer of 2020. Yeah. And for me, it was like, uh, it, it was kind of a kind of a life belt in 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 this situation we are, you know, to focus on music and and I wanted to focus on the, the positive aspect, lifting up, you know, the, the big harm, the big vocal harmonies, mm -hmm. um, and the lyrics are a little bit like they are uh, all kinds of. Some of them are just pranks but, but other are more deeper uh, but we're not and well okay to get it short that as a person i'm uh, i'm i'm a pretty positive guy you know yeah uh, and, yeah and i love I, I as much as i love you know as much as i love starless i love uh some mama's mama you know and Lars yes <laughs> yes exactly yeah it's the, those those two uh, sides of it, you know, and and the the you know that deep dark, you know, where you can sort of get lost in it, but also these things that lift you up, that bring you up. And I feel this yeah, album yeah, is very yeah, much yeah. touching on that. You mentioned the lyrics, and I, I wanted to talk about <laughs> that because it's not really a concept album, right? Uh, this no, album, but there's a, but there's a theme. Could I say there's a theme to this? To yeah. it to do yeah. with communication yeah. to do with the information or the lack of yeah. thereof perhaps could you speak a little bit about that theme 
Yeah, you you touched uh, well. You touched upon it there. It, it's the co- communication is is the headline, uh, or, or or lack of thereof. You know. Yeah. Uh, and when uh, you have to remember that the music was written uh, before the Trump administration, <laughs> and the lyrics was written after. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, therefore, the demagogue, the demagogue, yeah, the demagogue days in type. demagogue days, yeah, yeah, and, and some of the, uh, and I think in um, on many levels, every song has this aspect of communication. For instance, the song "Iconoclast," uh, yeah. the second single from the album, right, has this. It's kind of a call to arms for people who want to oppress other people, you know, uh, this proclamation from the authorities, go crush the heretics, you know. Yes, yes. Um, while Demagogue Days is a sunny, uplifting tune about lying politicians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while uh, uh, Under Mirrored Skies is this song about uh, uh, someone who kind of well, f- falls to the bottom of the sea, to, 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 to the bed of the um, of the sea. And, sea, sea bed, yeah, yeah. And, but also, this uh, it's a song about you know losing, losing, uh, losing it basically. Oh, while yeah. while the opening track um, uh, aroused and confused maybe says it all in title. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, so everything, everything on this album is, in one way or the other, about this communication. This about or the lack of the communication. Yeah. And um, uh, but but the concept kind of grew out of the music, so to say. You know, it's it's um, uh, and some of the lyrics started out just like you know lead lyrics that we needed to have a vocal line, and suddenly yeah. they turned into real real lyrics. You know. Yeah. Because you are the kind of composer then that you you write the music first and and then the lyrics comes after. You're not yeah, like uh, yeah. writing poetry and then you know you put music to them. It's the other way around for you. Yeah, for for me it's the other way around and uh, basically for Thomas also. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I I always like you know the way. One of the greatest things about Yes for me is, is the way that they use the vocals as in, in some part of the from fragile up until relayer uh, going for the one they, they use the vocals more as an instrument uh, than a vehicle for 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 some messages. A lot of they use the words more as sound painting, sound painting and yes. and, and text more than the typical rock lyric, you know, yeah. that's our easily understandable mountains came out of the sky and I stand there. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> you know, exactly. close to the edge, down yeah. by the river. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is and, like and, you um, say. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so, I, so for me, I, I, I like to sing, but I hate to write lyrics. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's maybe also why, you, like you said, they come more naturally than yeah. than to sit down and sort of force those lyrics out of you. You yeah. start, like you said, lead lyrics, like just putting something down on paper to have something to sing. And then mm. sort of it starts to paint a picture Oh. What is this yeah. mood? What? How can I put it down on the paper that I'm experiencing yeah. while singing or while we're playing this this uh, music? Yeah. I wanted yeah. to ask then, you know, because you mentioned the pandemic and how you started, you know, the process of making the album before the pandemic. And of course, I guess all musicians, everyone really, but all musicians who, who are uh, recording or making new music during this period have been affected. So uh, what was the the process then of recording the album, you know, writing the lyrics, coming up with this team, was it affected mm. by the pandemic? You know, you guys, were you able to meet up and, and play together? Did you have to do more, you know, from a distance? How did it work mm. out for you? And, and how was the process? We, uh, most, 
all the drums were recorded in 2019 before the pandemic uh, yeah. and a lot of the bass uh, and the, the, the bass guitar, bass synths and so on. And some of the keyboards and and uh, and because uh, Mari became a mother and uh, in 20, in the summer of 2019 and she got a daughter and we agreed to start, you know, rehearsing again uh, after half a year at the beginning of 2020, you know, yeah. and then the pandemic. It's, so yeah. uh, and, and that was also the plan to finish the album in early 2020. So she so uh, in 2020 I think we saw each other kind of five times or something. Mm. And uh, we, we managed to rehearse uh, and we managed to uh, we, we had some plans to make a concert and so on but it fell through of course. Yeah. And so but so uh, all the so we were never in the same room recording anything in 2020. But besides, yeah. um, uh, Thomas and me recording some vocals at his studio. So and um, and having this, you know, we were really we live in the same town, but it felt like we were living on different planets. Yeah, you could just as easily have been <laughs> all over the world, really, with the way it it yeah, ended really, up being. Really. Yeah. Uh, so we had this kind of you had we, we were close, but so far away yeah uh, and, and that also and that's kind of because some of the lyrics a lot of the lyrics wasn't right wasn't finished before the pandemic so i think for me a lot of the stuff was finished after the pandemic because then it suddenly yeah um, the concept it, it, it became clear what the sh- what the lyrics should be about you know yeah. and the communication aspect was much easier to to grasp when you suddenly couldn't communi- communicate, in, at least in person. Exact, exactly. I think you, uh, what you're touching on there, the, the fact that maybe it it become more to the front of your mind and everyone's minds how you reliant we are on you know that social mm-hmm. aspect of being able to see each other and communicate yeah. face to yeah. face and everything, and suddenly yeah. everything is moved over to you know less effective means of communications you know even mm-hmm. like us doing this over zoom is sort of a less yeah. effective way than it would have been if we could meet up and, and talk to each other face to face so yeah. i'm, I'm yeah. guessing that sort of put another like a few ideas maybe into your lyrical basket or or on how to to work with the team it, it definitely do and uh, it definitely did that and and it's it kind of reflected, uh, especially especially um, under mirrored skies, and uh, was really affected by this kind of this feel, this sinking feeling yeah. of of everything kind of falling down, not being able to rise up. You know, yeah. uh, whatever you try to do, you can't. You, you you try to swim, but you sink. You know, exactly. Uh, and 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 the society. Well, I I haven't been. Uh, personally affected I, I haven't had covid or something but I, i'm working as a teacher in secondary school yeah. in, in, a, in a part of oslo which is very affected by the pandemic so i i have uh, i have been in quarantine quite a few times and have a lot of uh, students that have been sick ill and, and uh, colleagues and so on so it ha- have affected me the whole uh, context of my private life and my working life I have been very much affected by this pandemic. Yeah. I've, I've been affected by it every day since it started. And, and, and then at some part in 2020, when you realize that, oh shit, it's going to be for at least a year. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got this, you know, this sinking feeling, the yeah. feeling like, oh, I, I, fuck it, I can't swim anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I see. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of us have, even if we we have the opportunity to to keep in touch with others, we are feeling mm. or, or or we felt that feeling of isolation. You know, to like you mm-hmm. say, to sink to the bottom of the ocean, and you know there yeah. are people out there. You know there are people all around, but you know it just seems so far away at 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 that mm-hmm. point <laughs> to be able to get back into that social distance where you actually can can interact with people. Uh, in fact, the next album by one of my projects electron project the, the next album is is in fact going to be called uh, uh, at some point in a less so socially distanced future <laughs> <laughs> i like that i love that title and 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 i have to say i hope that point comes sooner than later but i can see how that is that is a, an inspiration indeed you know because it's it affects every every aspect of our life really 
If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. theprogspace.com Well, mm-hmm. you mentioned Electron, Dana, and I think that's a nice segue to into talking about that because that's, of course, one of your yeah. other projects, which released a single <laughs> today. And today, yes, yeah, uh, in uh, which, which and also, that single is called, yeah, which it's also already, yeah. sort of feels like it's um, commenting on yeah. the current. It's it's called in these dark times, right? That's correct. Uh, yeah, and. When I wrote that uh, song earlier, last well, at the end of last year, I, um, I, I it, it was a very fitting title for this. You know, it was okay. It wasn't a normal Christmas holiday. No. You couldn't have a normal New Year's Eve. Everything was like very unnormal. Yes, and, and I and I came up with this title in these dark times, dark times. and which is. In spite of the title, it's a very, some very kind of uplifting song. It's about not uh, not kind of. Uh, it tries to to to, to tell that uh, well, it's light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a, a, it's not another train, you know. <laughs> no, that's the thing, you <laughs> know. I, well. I managed to listen a couple of times to the to the track today before before our interview, yeah, and yeah. I was like. This 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 doesn't sound like dark times at all. It actually sounds no. quite, you know. So I felt like like there was some kind of message in there that this is, you know, we might be in dark times and it me- might be dark times, but but there's it's it's not a negative. It's not a de- like a depressing like song and 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 in general, uh, you know, in Electron, I guess you would have room for that because, you you know, your inspirations with Kraftwerk and Devo and the bands you mentioned, artists you mentioned, you know, you, you could have an opening for creating more, you know, what can I say, more serious, more darker, more music there. Yeah. So, but, but you didn't. So is that the same then as with uh, Demagogue Days, that there is a need to have a positive feeling? Yeah, uh, I, yeah I agree. I, I think it's about, it's about having, trying to, trying to, you know, spread a little light in all the darkness. And, and, uh, and, and it's also because, uh, well, I, uh, some years back, uh, I had this huge heart operation, and mm. and uh, it was very serious. I had this triple bypass, so it was oh. it's not your uh, regular no, that's <laughs> day not, at the uh, hospital. Ex- exactly, that's uh, yeah, life changing uh, uh, event. Yeah, and after I wrote that, and after that experience, I I got this mentality. Of, I wanted to use my time on Earth to to spread some little a little bit of positivity, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 I think that kind of goes like a red thread uh, as a thread in all my music now. I agree. And I, I will, yeah, make it. And, and I'm also a huge fan of Beach Boys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, who well who isn't? Or uh, everybody yeah, should yeah. be. That's my that's my opinion yeah. on that. But but yeah, there is like a. a, a a sunny side to your music, which I which I really mm-hmm. enjoy, and and I have to say, you know, uh, with Electron, that's also something that I've enjoyed. As far as I know, you released one EP, right? Which yeah. which, is, uh, which is which uh, is simply called EP. <laughs> yeah. So so when did you start, you know, fiddling around with the the concepts that would lead into Electron and? Uh, I mentioned, you know, Kraftwerk, and what's your inspirations when it comes to Electron? Um, it's uh, I have to start with uh, I'm a drummer uh, at heart. You know, I started with drums when I was a really young boy, uh, and then and, and I love playing drums. But that's you know, uh, and still do. But, but at some point, I, I want to, you know, to try to learn another instrument. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a little bit too lazy to learn guitar or keyboards for real, you know. So, 
And I always love the sounds of um, the old analog gear from yeah. the seventies, eighties, and and when I got the opportunity to use, uh, I have behind behind me here the, the, the sequence that, uh, that I use, uh, the Ableton Live. Yeah. And I realized that I can compose music there and record it, record all this synth and make music that sounds a little bit like the synth music I grew up with in the mm. early eighties, you know. Uh, things like you know Devo from two four two yep. and all that kind of stuff that I really like this kind of uh, uh, well in from two four two is very aggressive music but it is, well yeah. Devo is a little more wacky music or exactly. twisted music yeah more crazy yeah. 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 I want to do and the Kraftwerk is this you know this ice cold precision especially the later albums you know? yeah like this <laughs> overwhelming <laughs> uh, you know like uh, very like uh, stern and uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and no drama, you know. Uh, <laughs> I remember I saw them in Oslo in 2004, I think, and then one of the computers skipped, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the guys, and the only reaction was like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All the musicians were like, ah, you know. Yeah, yeah. We started saying <laughs> something, in, yeah, you know, starting addressing the audience or something, but it just doesn't happen. No, 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 yeah. No, no. Yeah, it's the same. I, I saw them. Uh, I saw them in Trondheim a, a few years ago as well in the pouring rain, and it was so. It was raining so hard that you know those those we had those goggles that they passed out. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They were like sort of melting off your face, but the band was completely unaffected. They just you know stood there in the pouring rain, just playing like perfectly and not making yeah, a yeah. yeah. So I I can totally see what you mean by that sternness and that yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so you try but but that's not the that's not the kind of atmosphere you bring into electrons i feel because when i first heard about the project i was like oh this is gonna be like some craft work like yeah. you know but but when i listened to the ep it wasn't like that at all no and it's uh basically it's it's very much um, kind of my the pop musician inside me that is kind of <laughs> coming yeah. out uh, in, in that project. I love pop music. Uh, I love a good melody, uh, and so it's kind of pop music with a twist. Uh, uh, I yeah. would say. Um, yeah, I agree. And, uh, yeah, um, yeah, and and, I, and, I, and as I told you earlier that. Uh, I, I, I like to listen to you know uh, gloomy dark music yeah, but complex. I, I'm, not, I'm not that good at making it you know <laughs> 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 well, I, I think you know. I think uh, that's not completely true because you know, with Ponce Papa, which which I want to move on to, yeah. you know, you do play mm -hmm. some music that is, if not yeah. gloomy, at least it's quite a bit more complex and authoritative, you know, in the way mm -hmm. both it's performed mm -hmm. and written, and and I guess mm -hmm. that's one of the you know that's that's uh you have released eight albums is that it or seven we and then we have released seven and we have and we then, are writing and rehearsing for the eight yeah yeah so it's it's seven mm -hmm. and then the live then the live album yeah. right yeah which yeah, the, yeah, from yeah. paris yeah and uh or france mm -hmm. yeah and uh mm -hmm. so uh how did you how did you get involved with that band because i feel that is more of an outlet for you know there's some some avant-garde in there there's some mm -hmm. rock in opposition i would say seems to be an influence there uh what's yeah. the background for ponce papa well it's in fact, it's 24 years since I met uh, Stana Burva, uh, the sax uh, player in the band. And uh, it was we, together with a, a guitar player um, called Kultur Abramsen and a bass player, uh, Jörgen Schulstad, who started the band in 1997, 98. Mm. And uh, it started out basically because I was playing in this heavy prog outfit called Sanguesa and Stana had uh, at that point written i think it was a, a good 90 minutes of music for uh music for inspired by lord of the rings you know oh really uh, oh. yeah that kind of concept and i needed a drummer because they were going to play at the festival a kind of a tolkien festival at the university of oslo i see and uh, and we realized uh, I, 
after a rehearsal, we I lived here in Oslo and at Bislet and at I made some food and we sat down to all the band and I started to play, you know, this Samra Mama's Mama, yeah. Magma, yeah, those, uh, those bands, and the Cow, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Universe Hero. I was, I was listening a lot to that at that time. Mm. And Stan, I was like, wow, I've never heard this music before. And 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 it and we kind of realized working with this project that we, we, if not I and mean we're also huge fan of Queen, you know, both of us, yeah, yeah. huge Queen fans. And and we start we we realized that we wanted to make music together, and then we got this and not the typical symphonic bombastic rock but a little no. bit more intricate more involved instrumental music and when we got uh, Jarle uh, Stoleken on guitar uh, yeah. and uh, Anders Krabbe on bass guitar we, they are extremely good musicians very 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 highly skilled yeah. uh, but also not musicians but also very good writers very good writers and um, and then it, it kind of we, we, we realized that we can play almost everything you throw at the table you know <laughs> exactly. it takes some time to rehearse it but it, yeah and um, and then therefore we we could make even more and more complex music and we did <laughs> yeah and it seems also like the band became you know those early albums are a little bit more tongue-in-cheek with the the yeah. song titles and everything it, it's a bit more crazy while the the last album, Sumadis Suite, Suite, which came out mm-hmm. in 2019, right? Yes. That, that's that's uh, even if you know you, it's still the noticeably still the same band. It is uh, more, I wouldn't call it streamlined, but it's sort of more a clearer vision, maybe for right. for a, a serious band project where it's quite mm-hmm. obvious that the, the first things was just some uh, i want to say crazy inspirations coming together and we just want to make some crazy music together right yeah i, th- I think you summed it pretty good up there uh it's a very good uh, very good summed up and um yeah it, it was uh, it was you know it was crazy days those early <laughs> albums and, and, and it was great fun and and we still play uh, uh, some of those songs uh and uh, in fact one of our uh, pandemic uh, projects in Pons Papa have been to re-record one of the earlier tracks and we are making a video for it oh. right now. I'm going Very. to be released uh, well, in, sometime in May. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's, and it's, uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's a little bit more serious now than before, but, uh, but, uh, but, but all the reviewers and people are telling us that that's still what's, Typical Pons Popeyes, even if it's very complex, you can always find some melodic element to cling on to. You know? Yes, absolutely. It's a melody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and so even if it's become a little bit more serious, more involved, more more intricate, it, it's yeah. it's still music that I feel can you can you don't need to be a progressive rock fan. To enjoy the music, I agree with that. I agree with that, especially you know, with your listening to your latest album. That's that's like that's good music in in general. It's 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 interesting yeah. and good music, and I, I don't think you need to be a particularly deep into progressive music to enjoy a lot of the music on that album, and that came mm-hmm. out like we mentioned in two thousand and nineteen. So I'm, I I go, I have to ask then, are there uh, things happening in the Ponce Papa camp? You know, are you uh, writing new yeah. stuff or you mentioned yeah. the video, the video um, that's going to come out, of course, that's interesting. But uh, are you making new music? In fact, behind me now on the monitor screen, there is, is a Ponce Papa project. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, Anders and uh, Jarle uh, got this uh in, in the early 2000s just after they joined the band they had this uh, i think it was Omnish who had this concept for something it, it's a book book by a, a french writer called raymond Conan, uh-huh. which is called exercises in style hmm. and, and he's having this uh short note where he just you know uh, describes uh, uh something that happens 
And then you have 98 versions, different versions of that, you know, metaphoric and uh, backwards, all that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were really inspired by, well, why not make kind of like uh, 1998 exercises in style, musical styles? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really interesting and like a real challenge, you know, to yeah, have to yeah, have to view your uh, own music through so many different lenses. And I'm guessing, you know, the first few might be easier, but then you sort of come up against, you know, starting to, you know, what are we going to do next? Yeah, and there, uh, this project is... In as it looks like it is going to be uh, based on uh, on be completely digital uh, and sold through and released through uh, Bandcamp only. Yeah, and uh, because what we are, we are not recording the exercise, the first four are are released at the same time now in May. Yeah, but uh, then we're going to release you know number fifty six and fifty seven, and now I have started because because of my electron stuff i have some things that are pretty wacky and crazy and totally electronic and we have uh, some great pianist piano players that are going to play a piano concerto for a yeah. we have uh, a professional accordionist we have uh, wow. and we're going to have a, a, a soil magma version and uh, yeah <laughs> and, and we have a lot of people that are really interested in contributing to this so we're yeah. going to release four songs in early may yeah and then we're going to release, I think, trying to have 10, 15 of them out during 2021. Yeah, I see. So, Over the uh, year, as, as the year progresses, yeah, there will yeah. be more more uh, versions or more, yeah. 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 Hmm. Uh, so, and that is really, that have been a kind of a lifesaver now in the pandemic, having this stuff to work on, because we have never played this music, never ever played this, besides one song that was at the Pesto Dance. Yeah. Uh, the track there is, is, in fact, one of the, the exercises and stuff. But um, uh, we have never ever played this music together before we recorded it in the studio. Ah. Never ever. <laughs> so, this is kind of, everything is living in at the net, you know, at exactly. The yeah, <laughs> everything is like digital in in this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like a in is like a separate world where this this music is living, right? Yeah, kind oh. of parallel musical universe, you know. Very very <laughs> interesting. I'm I'm looking forward to hear that, and and we'll hear yeah. some of that in May, right? So that's that's yeah. gonna yeah. be yeah. I want to mention also because earlier in this interview already we min mentioned Ingelri. Which is yeah. sort of the the woodland prog of uh, <laughs> that that you have been involved in with uh, Shetil Vestrum Einarsen, which I guess mm -hmm. a lot of people know from his involvement in in Wobbler and White Willow. He's a flutist yeah. uh, on those albums, right? Uh, on a yeah. lot of those albums, and uh, so so far uh, you have released one long track with uh, Ingelri, which is like 25 26 minutes or something yeah, it's something like that yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so um, what what's the history behind this project <laughs> um well it's it's uh, i didn't write the music that was uh, Chetil, Chetil, yes. uh write uh, play flute and sing on the song and uh, and yeah, the Stuzve, the guitar player and bass yeah. player, um, and they have uh, Hietl have always been this kind of different figure in from everybody else in the Norwegian prog society. Yeah, uh, and and yeah, they have never been kind of a prog rocker. No, no, not they really. Had yeah. a prog background at all, you know. Yeah, but they wanted to make prog rock. So <laughs> 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 and. and um, and I was involved because I needed a drummer, and I, and I just love the music. So, it's, so we recorded yeah. two songs, in fact. And, and the other one is also a uh, long epic. And uh, it's, it's the same with their wonderful project, Vesabag Long. When, when they first have started playing a song, they can't manage <laughs> to finish it, you know. <laughs> it just has to go on, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the wonderful art of ending a song is maybe, it's you a, know. It's the hard, uh, the hard part in, in yeah. The hard part but, part but, but personally, I have to say, I'm, I'm glad that they're struggling with that because with Ingelri, I really, really enjoyed that 
that lo- extended yeah. uh, track you you guys uh, released there and uh, and I don't know if that's if this is true, but I heard some rumors that because I know Shetil is uh, listening to and inspired by all sorts of like weird black metal and these mm-hmm. kinds of stuff as well. And I heard some rumors that originally he had envisioned this sort of forest project to be like more black metal inspired or something. Am I wrong or? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah well, yes. Uh, uh, it, I think so, and he had, yeah, and but at the same time, uh, Gav, I remember when he was in the studio when we recorded drums, and he wanted me to sound like Jung Christensen, you know, <laughs> the jazz drummer. So it's exactly, yeah, <laughs> and this kind of mashed up there, you know, yeah. black metal Jung meets, so it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> black metal meets jazz drumming. So that, that's but, but yeah, that's that, that's when interesting black stuff jazz, is created. Yeah. Black jazz, yeah, that's when interesting <laughs> stuff is created, right? So. Definitely, um, yeah. and 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 it's um, it, it's it's a it's a studio project only, but yeah. I uh, I hope it's uh, I'm hoping to that the second song also will be released because yeah. it's it's also pretty cool. I'm looking so, forward to to hearing that. I hope it will become available, and that's also just a digital project, right? There's no physical yeah, releases yeah. so far, at least with with Ingelidi. No, you you know it's. Uh, 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 physical releases are <laughs> if you have if you are a band like you know Hans Papa you know Suburban and so yep. on it's it's possible yep. to sell quite a few physical copies but starting out as a band now it, you know just being a small group that don't play that much concerts and so on it's it's not feasible to release no. And especially uh, at uh, especially at this time as well where everything is so uncertain with you know the when can we gig again when can we tour mm-hmm. and bands that maybe have no like real interest in you know playing gigs live you know i, I know a lot of bands that's where they sell their albums that's where mm-hmm. they sell their mm-hmm. merchandise and stuff like that so it's totally understandable but I'm, i must say i would love to have that on a cd or even better uh, vinyl of that ingledy uh. music yeah yeah uh I want to, you know, we're getting up on 50 minutes, so I'm, yeah. I'm going to, you know, finish up a bit. But I wanted to ask finally, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you guys in Suburban had would have wanted to play live, to have a release gig, to, you know, get out there somehow. Uh, mm-hmm. And those plans are, are on hold or or maybe will have to be re- remade. Uh, what is in the future for uh, Suburban Savages? We are uh, we're planning to r- starting to write new music for uh, a new album. In fact, yeah, a follow up. And uh, yeah, because we uh, at least here in Oslo, it's it's impossible to say when things are going to open up. Um, yeah, I think that's the same all over the world, really. Yeah, yeah. and every, every band is interested in playing live, you know. So, yeah. so it's uh, uh, you need to have a de- you need to have a year with six hundred days to get every band covered, you know. Yeah. So, so, uh, so we have realized that okay, if we can play a gig in this year, it, it's a bonus. If not, well, we will take it some other time. But we we are uh, we have had we are pl- we are planning to start to write for a new album, and 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 that, that's the that's the beauty of, of using. You know, internet is that we can everybody have exactly uh, have digital workstations at home, so we can send ideas and and uh, and, uh, and exchange ideas and and concepts and uh, and yeah, create music without meeting each other you're you're able to actually keep up and being productive and and stay yeah. in communication with each yeah. other even if you're yeah. sort of yeah. a bit yeah. isolated yeah well i'm yeah. glad to hear that and i hope the chances to see you guys live will come maybe during yeah. 2021 or later because i i i just feel this music is gonna be amazing to see and listen to live and uh, yeah. For you guys who are watching and listening to this, I think you should head over to Suburban Savages Facebook and Bandcamp, listen to their music, which is also available on streaming services. Even better, buy their albums, because like yeah. Trun <laughs> says, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be sold out this, so you better get your coffee. And uh, thank you, Trun. It was very, very nice to have you on with me here. 
it was a pleasure and uh, keep up the good work thank you so thanks everyone please like and subscribe because that helps us at the prog space a lot and see you next time the prog talks produced by the prog space Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week. <laughs>